I'm saying you just need to be approachable, you need to be enjoyable, and most of all, you just need to have fun with it. And the exclusive 32-valve V8 Intex. Bob Ross energy today, I've got a denim shirt on. Um, no, what I want to talk about today is something that I've been doing a little bit more of lately now that I'm in this sort of like professional wine wanker space, which is how to do tastings with people without making it super wanky. Uh, I've just done the Fringe show that I was in. We've got a little bit in the Fringe show that is literally called the Bullshit Bell. Um, which anytime I said something that was like a little bit too pretentious, so quite often it would be something about like wild ferments or something, someone in the audience would ring the bullshit bell and just go, I'm not having fun anymore. You sound like a dickhead. And it's really interesting, the sort of gatekeeping that goes on in the wine community about you must have this level of knowledge to be able to come to a tasting event. I'm here to tell you that's bullshit. And I'm also here to tell you, here's the way that me and my friends end up hosting these little wine tasting evenings without it turning into a pain in the ass. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find people that actually give a level of shit about wine. Doing tastings with people who don't care about drinking wine, like, it's just an uphill battle. You're pushing shit uphill. And it's also kind of obnoxious. Like, I don't want to be the person who comes to a dinner party with a really nice bottle of wine and no one else is interested in talking about the wine and then you try and dominate the conversation, take over and talk about how the skin contact on this Nebbiolo has led to an increased tannin profile that's really exciting to pair with the chimichurri and steak that you're having. Although I love saying that, if people don't want to hear it, you're essentially being the person out in public Bible bashing going, hey, I should convert you to my way of thinking. It's obnoxious. If people don't want to hear it, don't tell it to them. So that's step one. Make sure that the people that you're doing a wine tasting with are actually interested in tasting wine. Uh, step two is make sure that you're not doing it with any of those gatekeepy flogs that we were just talking about. There's nothing that takes the air out of a room more than when someone swills it round, swills around a glass of wine and goes, oh yeah, it's getting a bit of oak on this one. And then someone goes, oh, well this is actually seen no time in barrel, so that's wrong. It's not wrong. If they think it smells like oak, they think it smells like oak. What the fuck is the point of doing a tasting if you can't tell people what you think things taste like or thinks what things smell like? So make sure that you haven't got anyone who's going to make it their job to make sure everyone knows that they are the smartest person. Because trust me, I've drunk wine with them and I hate it. It is no fun. And if you're one of those people, good hard look in the mirror. That's what I need you to do right now. Are you having a good time or are you just being a little bit of a show -off? Uh, the next thing that you need to do is you need to figure out how many wines do you want to taste on the night. So we've got a group of about five or six people. Um, we've got like Georgie who's doing her wine training at the moment. We've got someone who works in a bottle shop. We've got me who does this. And then we've just got three people who don't work in the wine industry at all. They just like hanging out with us and they like drinking. So what we do, you can do the thing where everyone brings their own bottle and you sit down and taste them blind or do whatever, what we like doing is we take it in turns hosting and whoever hosts, they just picks five wines. Five wines can be whatever they want. So uh, uh, Georgie's doing it, it'll probably be five wines that she's been working on at work, which is really fun. Uh, if Raf's doing it, he's a rep for a sort of wine distributor, so he'll bring in five different bottles that he's really excited about. I'll do Unico or things from different tastings that we've done up here. And that allows you to sort of have someone curate the lineup a little bit. Another good tip for tasting wine is if you want to get better at tasting something, don't necessarily go out and drink five Rieslings or five Pinot Gris or five Shirazes. What's actually more interesting, I find, is drinking five wines from the same region. Now, they could be different grape varietals, but if they're coming from the same place, I find it easier personally as an idiot who's recently gotten into wine to taste the difference between Polish Hill Riesling, so a Clare Valley Polish Hill Riesling, which has this sort of more tropical element going on. And I can see the similarities between a Polish Hill Riesling and a Polish Hill Pinot Gris more easily than I can see the similarities between a Polish Hill Riesling and then a Margaret River Riesling. I don't even know if Margaret River makes Riesling. Again, if you're sitting there going, oh, Margaret River, fuck off, no one cares. We're trying to have a fun time here, relax, okay? I'm just trying to make the point that you should try tasting things from specific regions rather than just picking specific wines. Because Shiraz can taste like Syrah, it can taste like Shiraz, it can taste like Pinot Noir if people handle it differently. So just going off a grape varietal, you're shooting in the dark, it's really difficult. Next thing, 
when you're at the table and you're doing your wine tasting. So we've got the six of us sat around and when I hosted it, I printed out five sheets and they just had the options game written on there. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the options game. People who've watched the channel for a long time would have seen it back in the day of the live streams. But essentially the options game is a really good way of talking about wine with people who have different levels of wine knowledge and wine communication skills. Because what it does is it breaks uh, the tasting notes down into a series of multiple choice questions. And I don't know if you've ever done a test at high school, but I always found the multiple choice ones a lot easier than the long answer ones. So it's a good way to just sort of bring the barrier to entry down a little bit. So question number one when you're playing options is always old world or new world? Uh, is this wine from an old world country like Italy, France, Germany? Or is it from a new world country like Australia, the USA or South Africa, New Zealand, all of that sort of stuff. And when people start drinking things and getting things right, they get that little spark of dopamine, which makes them more excited about drinking wine. So again, Mr. Uh, Margaret River doesn't make Riesling. They would rather talk to me than talk to you about it because I make them feel good. And wine is a luxury product that should make you feel good. So my idea to you, my premise, I'm getting all worked up. I don't know why I'm getting so worked up. It's so funny. My premise for you is that wine tastings should be fun. They shouldn't be serious. And you can have serious wine tastings. That's fine. I'm not coming for you. I'm just not going to come to them because I am not clever enough to be enjoying, to enjoy that conversation. I'm not clever enough to enjoy that conversation. So the system that we're running, where we've got five bottles and someone's just buying them. The great thing about doing a wine tasting like that, as opposed to just doing it on your own time, is that you can split the costs. It's great. So when they're coming over to my house, I'll cook dinner, dinner's on me, I pay for the dinner ingredients, but then all of the wines, you can split, the, like we just do a split wise at the end of the night. And instead of me having to spend, I don't know, five bottles of $40 bottle of wine, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 200 bucks on just wines for me, I'm spending $40 and I get to taste five different wines. And then at the end of the night, everyone gets to go home with their favorite bottle of wine. It's a cool way of doing it. I can actually hear the annoyance in my voice now. I'm not speaking chilled, I'm speaking all worked up. Why do I care this much? This is the problem with wine, right? This is the problem. You get into it, your boss asks you to do a YouTube channel, and now two years later, you're yelling at people about why Riesling can come from Margaret River. I'm so confused. I say all of this to say, I say all of this to say, uh, I'm, I'm about to make another video on the channel that's talking about my experiences in the wine community and why I'm so passionate about it now and why when I'm talking to you like this, my voice is no longer at this octave. It's up here because I'm, I'm alarmed and getting involved with wine has honestly been the best thing that's happened to me in the last few years. Uh, the community of people that are out there, they've all got a little bit of farmer in them because ultimately we are farming grapes, pressing them and fermenting them. That is what all of this hubbub is about. It is a farm first product. And I don't know if you've spent much time with farmers, but they are cool people. And the people who sell wines, they are usually cool people as well. It's only the people who drink wine that get a little bit problematic sometimes. So I wanted to give you these lessons. I don't even know if they're lessons. They're more just ramblings of an idiot who likes wine a little bit. Try and teach you how to be the right sort of wine drinker. And that's not the right sort of wine drinker in the sense that you're going for your MW and can spin a Chardonnay around and identify how much barrel age it's got on the color alone. I'm saying you just need to be approachable, you need to be enjoyable, and most of all, you just need to have fun with it. So that's my advice. Get some mates together, get a few bottles of wine, Make up some dumb little tasting note shit. But play the options game. Make a little worksheet up. Do a PowerPoint presentation. Shit's fun. Having three glasses of wine and then doing a PowerPoint presentation on fuck, marry, kill, Nebbiolo, Pinot Noir and Grenache is really fun. I've done it. Trust me. It's a good time. But ultimately, just get out there, drink some wines and just don't be a dick.